What's up everyone? This is Brian Weber again with another video. I'm going to talk about my the update on my small account challenge. I started with $3,000 and this week or this past week I made $253 after all commissions and stuff. So that's what I got into my account. So the account's about at uh, $2,830. So just short of where I started. Um, but the, the big difference is this week uh, I was very disciplined. Um, I uh, I kept my losses small, although I missed a lot of opportunities because I was distracted and had some responsibilities to deal with with my day job, my nine to five job, because I still work for for a company during the day. So I did miss a lot of the big move on the the up rally and then also the sell off the day after we made a new all time high on the the um, ES the S and P five hundred futures. But it's okay. I know there's opportunities every single day. I know there's going to be trades setting up this week, even tonight, because the market actually just gapped down about 40 points, a little bit more than that, because of the news that Trump decided to start the 25% increase on tar China tariffs starting this Friday. So the market reacted, didn't like it, and we actually lost 2,900 briefly. I haven't checked it since then, um, but we were hovering just back above 2,900. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities, I think, tonight and the next few days with this volatility that's increased so I'll be I'll be looking in the two hours that I have this week every morning I would say and then after work as well sometimes I can trade the close but it's not always the best because I'm not fully focused but there's gonna be plenty of opportunity to make some money this week you know and I do want to cover the the goals that I have for May and that's going to be first focusing on risk management um, I don't do it at all right now, but really you've got to focus. I think uh, two weeks ago I actually did this, but this past week I didn't do it at all. But not moving my stop once, once it's in place and not averaging down on a losing trade. Take the loss. If you didn't, if you get stopped out, it's okay. You know, it means your entry wasn't good or the trade wasn't that good. So just find the next opportunity. Um, for profit, I'm going to try to make. I don't try to set this up like uh, I don't advise doing this trying to make X amount every single day because it plays tricks on your mind and you'll do you'll make decisions that don't always have your best interest in mind say if I wanted to make a hundred bucks a, a day that's realistic in this size account but if I was going to say I want to make three four hundred dollars a day if I'm up 200 and I keep pushing the envelope I'm probably gonna lose money because I mean that's just Psycho trading psychology at work right there kind of going into a self-sabotage cycle and not being okay with the money you made and just moving on to the next day if you don't see any opportunities you're kind of forcing them so going to have a goal of making a hundred dollars hundred dollars a day so it's about two thousand dollars a month because if I can do this for this month I'm going to increase the lot size to two and then just scale up that way and I have a scaling plan eventually once I complete the first month I'll go more into that on on how I plan to start scaling this account so and then of course I have some other challenges you know getting a hitting a five point trade on ES with one lot it doesn't even matter if it's one lot or two but getting five points on one trade getting 10 points it's kind of like a game like a checklist in a way like I have these objectives these goals so I'm striving to get take really good trades so I can hit these achievements you know um, think about it as like leveling up in a video game in a way and then on on crude oil I'd like to make I don't I'm not gonna try to make this on every trade but if the trade allows for it obviously I'm gonna try to get it um, and trail my profit as appropriately as I normally do on the tick chart getting 25 tick trade on CL and then a 50 tick trade on sale as well. This is all going to be with one lot. So I do before I before I leave you guys, I want to jump in really quick and discuss some of the trades. There's two trades in particular that really good setups. One took profit a little too early, like really too early, and the other one I trailed my stop a little too aggressively before the trade took off and ended up being about the difference between a hundred dollar profit and fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, it, it was uh, it was the Thursday when we actually sold off. So, and I was short, uh, almost at the high of the day. 
So I'll go into these these trades and how I set that up, and just so maybe you guys can learn something from it, and you know maybe you can uh, yeah make some money and learn why I took these trades. So let's jump into that before I before I close this out. All right. So actually, uh, as I mentioned, the market did get down, so I did make a couple of trades. Um, volatility is very whippy, so my auto my auto break even plus one tick ended up getting hit a couple times, but I did manage to make about $141 after commission. So the account's now at 2,977. So I'm going to go into this week strong, probably not take another trade until later tonight or early tomorrow morning with uh, the trade pro Academy team. Excuse me, let me put that on, on vibrate. So let me just show you so far like this month, See, like my normal win rate is coming back into effect. So I think maybe I'm getting in the groove a little bit. That's what it's telling me. About 85% win rate. I'm up a little over $300, mostly from ES. Um, did have a bunch of good trades. Getting, not really capturing all the profit that I initially had. Like I was saying, on like even the few trades I just took now was up like two points or more. And I ended up getting two ticks because of the volatility whipping around. And the same thing happened on a few ES trades and CL trades this week too. So reality, it should be actually up a lot more um, and well into the $1,000 range, if not 2000 this week alone. Um, but it, it's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a process though and, you know, learning to balance the profit and moving the stop and all that stuff. But it's okay. Not worried about it. Uh, just take good trades, but the two trades I really want to take to show you guys is let's see. So this first one it was actually a short trade. If you guys didn't know this trade, this sell off right here, this is the ES happened on the Fed minutes. So this was Wednesday of last week. So the market actually made new all time highs the day before or actually that overnight trading. So it was the same day, same candle. And we actually sold off quite a bit because I guess the Jerome Powell wasn't as dovish. He was actually more hawkish than dovish, which after we lost the 2940 area, it all just kind of went downhill after that. And you can see we went to the 2915 area. And on Thursday, we actually created this, uh, the overnight high, we actually started rallying, and I saw a, a pattern I kind of noticed after a pretty big sell-off, where people were just overreacting. I mean, it was all psychology, and people stops being hit too. People panic selling, and then also people stops getting hit, and just caused this this crazy downfall. I mean, the the price that it was going, the rate at which it was going down was incredibly fast, and there wasn't much of an entry. If you don't know how to play shorts when that happens, that there's not much of a pullback that I'm starting to learn. If you're shorting, that's because people are either trapped or their stops are getting hit. So there's not going to be there's not going to be a nice pullback on a long like you would have in a long where it'd be you'd be able to time it correctly. There's going to be I don't I don't know if I can really draw on the screen here. Let me see if I can. So yeah, so on a on a long you might have something like this. It might taper down and then consolidate and go up again but on a short when it comes down it has like like a little blip and then it keeps going because there's there might be a little bit of buyers but the, sell, the selling is overpowering and it just keeps going down i mean that this will probably happen like two times maybe three and before the buyings you, so before you might make a higher low and try to go back up but that's what i noticed with shorts anyways the reason why i took this trade is because we had this overnight high of 29.32 quarter, and this was the overnight action leading into Thursday, and we had that big doji candle, and this is the open here. We actually had, I, I can't remember which economic data that we had come out on Thursday, but it seemed pretty good, and then we went up and tested the overnight high, and once I saw that we made, this is on the 15 minute, so I can't really go down to the five, but on the five minute in the tick chart, you can see we made lower highs. So I ended up getting short at 31.75 at a two point stop. So 
had plenty of room to be to give the trade some time to work and some and some risk to work on it and ended up getting out around the 28 area so I got about three points on it but um, I took profit too early and if I show you I don't have another chart here but if you traded that day you'll know that ES after it lost the 28 area it just snowballed down all the way down to the 2901 so that trade ended up having about fifteen hundred dollars profit I mean just cons just assume that I would have gotten out at like 2912 had I been trailing all the way down because once we lost the overnight lows right here I mean we sliced straight through it could have actually got short again but I, I had to go to work could have got short again on this retest because we went all the way to 2910 just above there and we came back and retested and just rolled over even more but that's one of the trades I wasn't able to um, took the profit a little too early and it's kind of similar to this long trade that I had on Friday too and the reason why I took this trade this was a uh, we were rallying based on a huge jobs beat. I think we added 263,000 jobs and it was like the upper 190,000 that was forecasted so it was a really big beat in this day Warren Buffett also announced that he had a, a decent sized stake in Amazon. So the market was on a buying frenzy, more or less. You can see on the daily candle, because we closed pretty much at the high. And those poor buyers, most probably mostly retail buyers, because it was low volume that we rallied on. And the gap down pretty much wrecked everyone today. So, I mean, if, unless the, the market hasn't opened if you weren't in futures there's going to be a rude awakening of those people that went long chasing this when the market opens tomorrow unless we uh, unless we um, recover overnight, but I doubt it with a 40-point move down like that. But uh, the reason why I took this trade and ended up also getting out a little too early here, I think I had to stop a little too tight. If you see this move up to towards the uh, this trend line right here, first this was the uh, that 32 area, 32, 33 that was resistance. I had this box here. We hit it first, then we actually we actually sold off on lower volume. Then we came back up. We finally pushed back above and tested this 38 area. This was a downtrend line from the all-time high, so it's something I was watching for potential breakout. And you can see I was I got in around 32. It's quarter, maybe 32.50, so pretty much right at the low of these candles. This is a five-minute chart. And the reason why I got in there is because you can see that the volume is actually increasing on the buying and decreasing on the selling. See these three candles, the volume is actually going down. And as we consolidate here, you can see that this, this move up was confirmed with these spikes in volume as we broke through the resistance and really my target should have been to the 42 getting out on this candle right here on this huge spike of volume because that was more or less capitulation people chasing and we actually did reset lower to test 38 there that was most likely retail traders buying at the top and getting stopped out before we u-turned again to go back up towards the 50 area but trades like these getting really good at recognizing even better entries more than i used to I mean, I've been trading for about 15, almost 15 months in futures. And at the same time as I'm trying to grow this account, I'm also honing my skills on making sure that I take the entries that I see and analyzing whether or not it's a good entry to take it or not. So and along with the trading psychology, which is the most difficult, but working on that as well through some neuro-linguistic techniques thanks to TradePro Academy. So I think there's, there's going to be significant and improvement and progress being made in the next month to three months in this small account. So I'm excited to share with you guys the progress and let you guys know how it's going. And I'll be back again next week with an update and tell you guys how this, this, this upcoming trading week went, but I'm thinking it's going to go well. I'm staying positive because I, I have confidence that it's going to go well and going to hit my goals not worried about it, just got to manage risk and the rest will fall in place. So if you guys haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just go ahead and click my logo that's popping up now. And I appreciate the support. Thank you for the new subscribers that uh, have subscribed to the, my channel this past week. You guys are awesome. And I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh, and happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way. Talk to you guys soon. If you celebrate, be safe. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.